Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do a quick, what we call a broker price opinion uh, or a BPO for our clients. So they, this scenario, they have a property um, and they wanna know, you know what the value is um, roughly uh, if we put in an offer, what are the chances of it appraising, right? So first things first, let's come up with a subject property. The subject property is going to be in Miami. So we're going to go ahead and look up Miami over here. I want to get the tax roll up. Okay, 280 Northwest, 140. Oh, you're not sharing your screen. Share your screen, please. Oh, I bet. There you go. Cool. So first thing we want to do is we want to go into the IMAP and we want to search the property. Okay. And up here is a URL, scfimap.com, log in. And then you want to go ahead and put the address right here. Which is Northwest 148th Street. Now, because Miami is Miami and typically bedrooms and bathrooms on the tax roll are not always the ones that show up on the in the actual property you want to verify this so here it says it's a 2 1 1346 square feet okay um, now if I go up here and I look at my matrix okay and look up the property well map and I Look up 280 Northwest 148th Street, Miami. It's going to come up to this one right here. Now, there it is. So, what I want to do is I want to take a quick peek and see is this property? It's showing as a 3 2. So, I'm going to assume that it's a three bedroom, two bath because they put it on there. Mm -hmm. Public record says that it's a 2-1 doesn't necessarily mean that the appraiser is going to hold it to a 2-1. As long as the house was done in a construction-like manner and it was done properly, it doesn't necessarily have to be legally on the public record for the appraiser to count it. So I'm going to count this as a three-bedroom, two-bath. And uh, I want to verify the square footage. And it's got a pool. So this is a 3-2 with a pool. Okay. And then I, it doesn't have any square footage here. So I'm going to look in the public in the remarks here to see what they say. It's a large 10,000 square foot lot, which is normal for the area. Um, and I'm going to assume that the square footage is the same, about 1,300 to 1,700 square feet. So now, here's the first step. Yeah. You there? You had a question? Yes. When you said about um, that it was done in a, when the, the, the appraiser is not really going to care about whether it be in a 2 1 or a 3 1, as long as they did it in a right, rightfully manner, does that mean as long as they did it with a permit? Or does that, that mean that they just have, to have a permit okay. to, for an appraiser to count it as a bedroom? So if you go through the house and it flows and it's functional mm -hmm. uh, and it looks like, you know, it's a normal three bedroom, two bath house and it doesn't look like a shoddy job, like they cut corners or like there's certain things that have been added in properly. Got it. Assuming they're going to comp it as a three, two. We have to assume that we're going to comp it as a three, two. If the appraiser comes back and says it's not a 3-2, it's a 2-1, that's a different ballgame. But right now, we're assuming it's a 3-2 because that's what we're looking at here on the public uh, on the on the MLS. So, so now that we verified that information, 3-2 with the pool, this is what we're going to do, okay? We're going to go back to the map, okay? I'm going to zoom out. And what I want to make sure I do is when I to pull comps, I want to look at an area, and you can kind of tell when you're in a satellite. You might, yours might look like this. If it looks like this, go right here on the map side. Click on satellite. Yeah. Kind of get an idea of what the general area is. As you can see, the lots are about the same, right? And um, you can also see that in, in it, there's no major roads. Like the major road barrier will be here. The major road will be 95. 151, as you can see, is a bigger number. So that usually means it's a, it's a main, main road. So in Biscayne Gardens, you're probably going to be able to go from that road, which is 153rd here, 151, down to 143rd. This whole area is going to be all about the same, okay? So if I go ahead and I zoom out and I do a little um, uh, whatever that's called, polygon search or whatever, I can actually do this. Go like this, go like this, 
go like this. You seen the ones on the water there? Well, this is what I do. It's, this is not waterfront. So I'm going to go back to criteria. I'm going to click waterfront. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say three bedrooms or two baths, 180 days back. And look, look at the results, only seven results. So when I look here, um, I see that there are four active, two closed and one pending. What that tells me is that in the last six months, two sold. So one every three months sold and there's four active. All right. Now, normally people would say this is a seller's uh, buyer's market, but look at something else here. The reason why I don't think this is a buyer's market is because if you see what's sold, everything that's selling is under two, uh, under 300, right? 285, 220, 280. Yeah. Yes. Properties are under 300 on the market. Uh -huh. So it's still a seller's market, but most of the sellers in here are just asking over what the price should be. Okay. So um, if you look here at the broker price opinion, which is what we're doing, it's very simple to see that you would probably say that the value is right at about 280. Let's take a look specifically at what's, um, what, what these look like. This one's a 285, only one picture, which probably means the house is not very nice inside. Here's a one at 220. Looks like it needs a lot of work, no pool. Ours is nicer, okay? And then look at this one. This is a 280 pending at 3 2, 1100 square feet. Uh, inside it looks decent. Uh, kitchen looks not completely remodeled, but at least they painted the counters. The bathrooms are nice and clean, but they're not updated. Um, and then it's just got, you know, the house is nice, but it's not fully renovated. Now, is ours fully renovated? Yes. Okay. So ours is fully renovated. So now this is 280, this is 285. And how much are they asking on ours? 389, well, 390 is the one on top, the first one. So they're the highest priced home in the area. And if you look at ours, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. Very nice. Um, but we're going to have a challenge with the value here because of the fact that it is completely renovated. Um, however, um, there isn't really any comps to support it. Now, the other thing we could do is we could do this. We can go back to criteria. We can try to see if it's a 3-1 or bigger because a 3-1 is not as nice as a 3-2. So it could probably be used as comparable. And let's go back 360 days to see if anything comes in that can actually support a renovated property. So back in the last year, check this out. In the last year, look how many look how many sales. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight sales. And how many do we have on the market? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we got about a year supply worth of homes on the market. And then let's take a look and see what these have sold for. This one sold at 305. Now this is nice. It's got a one car garage. It's got a nice curb appeal. It's not necessarily updated and renovated, but it's got the charm a lot better than the other ones we saw, right? Mm -hmm. That's sold at 305. Let's go look at the next one. Here's one at 320. This one's nice. And guess what? It's been renovated. Okay. So this one would probably be considered a comp. Now it does not have a pool. They're probably going to add another $10,000 for the pool. So it's probably going to be about 330. They could make an adjustment for that. Okay. And then 315. Okay. So um, you're looking at about 315 to 320. Um, look at this one, 293. Again, nice inside. Um, not necessarily updated. This is nice, but this is not like what you would put in the standard of bathroom today, in today's market. Um, kitchen's nice. Kitchen was redone, floors were redone. It's a nice home and it's 293. So this market is screaming that 320, 330, tops is going to be where you're going to where you're going to where the appraisal is going to come back at now we know why they're giving us such a hard time at 389.9 um why you said that they want to put in an offer without any um contingencies on appraisal because they already know we're going to have an issue with appraisal so this thing is going to come in at 330 most likely even though there's a 280 and 280 pending and, and you're seeing here what's what's closed. So based on what we see here, this property 
and the renovations and the updates in the in the in the pool is going to be worth between three twenty and three thirty. All right. Yes. That's how you do a broker price opinion. Can you send me those? Uh, boy, I mean, I'm going to do it on my own, but can you send me um, that to my email, please? Of course. I'm going to share this with everyone. So hopefully that was helpful. Did you have any questions while we're here about the way we did this, the approach, and any questions regarding the process? Uh, in, in a Dolpho situation, they're going to submit an offer, and obviously we know the appraisal is going to come in way low. So what, what, I mean, is it even worth submitting an offer? It all depends on the motivation of this person. Okay, let's take a look at this listing. Okay, this is the one he wants to put in an offer on. Okay, my first question is going to be, is a property vacant or is it rented? Um, it will be vacant on Tuesday. It was, uh, um, it was a uh, vacational home. A vacation home. Well, guess what happened to vacational home, guys? Well, not anymore. Disappeared. And it's right. completely at zero now. So these guys, I would say we submit an offer because what are they going to do? They're going to rent it. And if they rent it, what's the best rental that they can get for this property in this area? I'm going to guess 2500 And a 2500 is probably not going to cover what they're used to getting uh, as a seasonal rental. I was looking here just at the history of what they did. And it looks like they put it on the market in January. Okay, that's quite, been quite a, a while now. And it's at 389 and they have not dropped their price. I'm a little concerned because if they haven't dropped the price and it's been almost four months, um, like the pressure's on, but I don't know how much money they have and how long they're willing to wait until this market turns. But right now it's very clear. If they drop their price to 330, they would sell tomorrow. But they're grossly overpriced. They're overpriced by $70,000, $60,000. Okay. So I guess the question then becomes, are Adolfo's buyers motivated enough to pay an additional 50000 out of pocket? It's a condition, not an objection, Solomon. I think it's not about motivation. It's about, are they able to? Do they have the cash? And, and most likely, somebody's not going to be willing to pay an extra $60,000 when we're talking about this price point. Maybe an extra five, maybe an extra 10, but most buyers are not going to want to pay more uh, than than uh, than ten grand over to get a deal, uh, even though it's in a nice area, because at the end of the day, look at this. Look look what's sold, and then if they went on the market right now, they were looking. Look how many properties they can consider. You know, in the area under this one. Uh, again, this needs updating, but hasn't sold three seventy five, right? Um, and then here's three thirty nine. Again, doesn't have a pool but it's 339, it's in the same area, it's in these renovation, it seems overpriced as well. And you got this one at 320, which eh, it's okay, it's nothing special, it needs renovation, but it's at 320, no pool. And then you got this one at 310, again, not as nice, same area, needs a complete renovation. This one at 300 with a one car garage, needs renovation. The, the, the challenge with this area, is that it's highly sought after, people want it, um, but the challenge is it's hard to find a good property priced right. You got a lot of sellers that are like, oh, well, if everybody wants my neighborhood, I'll let it go if I can sell it for this price. So this is a tough call, uh, Adolfo. I think it's, it might be worth a chance. I think the question would be with the agent, I think we have a high level conversation and we say, hey, I know that you want 390. I did the comps and I think you would agree with me that the value, if we stretch it and it would be a record sale for a three bedroom, two bath in Biscayne Gardens in the last year would be 330. If the appraisal came back at 320, 330, and maybe I can find the way to have my buyer come up with a little bit extra cash. Do you think it would be worth our time to go under contract or do you think it would be a waste of time? and feel them out yeah and they already said no we we were going to submit uh we, we we talked about 345 and they automatically re rejected that yeah i think what's happening here and i'm guessing what's happening here is this it would be worth it to them to pay that mortgage every single month for the next three or four months until things pick back up or even rent it then it then it would mean to sell it 
at a price that would cause the sell. I have a feeling they're they're going to lose money at 320, and that's probably why they wouldn't want to do that. But this is a great way to this is a great exercise to do if you're working with someone who's adamant about the price that they're asking and your buyer's concerned, am I wasting my time? We're going to have this conversation and we already know what we're going to end up doing or looking at down the road. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. That property, they're selling the, the furniture, everything that's inside of it. I mean, I don't know if that will make a difference because furniture has no material value in the eyes of an appraiser. Mm -hmm. You can show some kind of receipts to say, hey, we got $10,000 worth of furniture. You'd be lucky um, if they can give you a few thousand bucks for it. But with reality, there's two separate transactions. There's a furniture and then there's the actual real estate. So if they want to sell it with all the furniture inside, that's fine. That's a separate transaction. But we're not going to be able to actually get more value. And certainly not sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 worth of value uh, for, for, for furniture. They're buying real estate, not furniture. Any other questions? No, I think this was good. It's great. Thank you. Got it. Just if you don't.